Hello once again, Rally Riders, and uh, welcome back to the uh, continuing demonstration videos of using Garmin Basecamp to get the rally book information uh, into your GPS. We're going to continue the route selection. This time, we're going to start with uh, uh, step number four, time out the route segments to verify arrival times at the time bonus locations, establish the rest points, and confirm arrival time within the leg hours. Uh, <clears throat> going to make adjustments to the uh, uh, point goals and the ride pace constraints to keep everything in balance and then finally load everything up onto the GPS. Going to continue to use uh, leg two of 2013, had 65 total leg hours, had a start time in Pennsylvania on the 5th of July at 6 o'clock in the morning Eastern Daylight Time. You had to be in uh, Rancho Cordova or near Sacramento on the 7th at uh, 2000 or uh, 8 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. And because I've already done this uh, preliminary planning and built it into the route, uh, the route is uh, fairly close to uh, being doable. Now all I have to do is just uh, verify a few things. Let's bring up the route properties again, take a look at it. Of course, you're starting over here in Pennsylvania and going all the way to Sacramento area. 3,063 miles, 47 hours, 46 minutes of driving time. I'm using the driving pro, uh, uh, profile instead of the motorcycle one. I found it a little more accurate, a little better on the roads. But uh, I have adjusted the speeds uh, to closely match what I actually ride out on the highways. And uh, you can do that by selecting Edit for Options, Activity Profile, and then go to the Routing tab. Come down here, and you can change the speed at which uh, Garmin assigns to each one of these types of roads. I'm not going to set it back because then it'll have to do a recalculation, but uh, uh, it's initially set at 67, and this is like uh, uh, 58 or so, and this is uh, 45. I, I leave this collector roads, which are street highways and cities, and uh, the residential ones set at the default. Uh, but uh, for the most part, I've just changed the interstate speeds and the big collecting roads. But that has an effect on this number right here. If you change those speeds, it'll either go up or down. Can't get crazy with it, of course, like put it 95 miles an hour. It will be unrealistic, of course. Uh, but uh, getting back to Garmin. Uh, base camp uh, version four and above has had this nice little little uh, departure time and waypoint uh, layover times uh, function that uh, will help you to time out the route. Now we're pretty close to getting there now. It's just if we look at the time at the checkpoint, it's 6:46 Central Time, or that would be 4:46 Pacific Time on the seventh. Uh, but uh, Right now, we don't have any rest periods in there. We don't have any uh, time for gassing up and time for stopping at uh, bonus locations to do the bonus task. That's what this timing thing is all about. So let's uh, see how that works. Double click on the start point. It shows our departure time on, this, on the 7th or the 5th of July at uh, 7 a.m. Uh, of course, that's uh, central time. That would be 8 a.m. Eastern time. That accounts for my two hours of uh, planning time. So that's our start point. And uh, if you click on a waypoint, it shows that you can establish an arrival time and a departure time. That comes in handy when you have to spend more than a few minutes at a place or you're going to spend the night there. Uh, but uh, uh, it has this nice little feature that if you just click on the departure, you get this layover function down here. And you can assign uh, several minutes or hours uh, for a, a waypoint. So this is the AMA uh, waypoint where you take a picture and get a dated business receipt that you went there. And uh, it'll take at least 10 minutes. So I'm going to put 10 minutes there. And as you can see, it will add that time. It shows you arriving at this time and departing at that time. And you could go on to the next one, put another 10 minutes in there. It doesn't, uh, you can do these in rapid succession. It does take some time. And uh, you just keep going through those, right? Uh, if you had a, a bonus that had a, a timed window into it, like you had to uh, 
uh, uh, spend two hours there, and then you could uh, uh, put as much time as you wanted in there. So two hours, three hours, whatever it is you have to do to stay there. We'll just put 10 minutes in there for now, right now. Just to sh see how it works. And uh, you can go on and do that, but uh, uh, there's a quicker, easier, dirtier way of, of uh, timing out the whole route. Let's see what those that 30 minutes has done. That's pushed us up to 7, uh, 16 a.m. Again, that's central time, so that would be 5, 16 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, but the big thing, time consumers are going to be uh, your rest time, about 12 hours. Let's see uh, what happens here. Let's bring up the, the uh, chart. And uh, sometime between here and the airplane bonus, the controlling one out here next to Pikes Peak, I'm, I'm going to have to do some rest somehow. And I want to get out to this spot here at uh, the uh, APR, the airport restaurant. I want to get there by uh, sunrise and because it's a daylight bonus. So let's see what time we're arriving there. It shows that I'm at 4.25 central time. So that's 3.25 uh, mountain time. So uh, somewhere along the route here, I'm going to uh, do some rest. So I'm just going to pick a, a bonus location that's before that. And I'm going to add uh, uh, three hours to it just to uh, get some rest time in. Of course, this was a big BBG thing. So now let's see what time here. It's a 6:25 uh, Mountain Time that I'm arriving now, and it shows that it's 7:25 Central Time. So that looks good. So uh, now I've got uh, uh, my BBG effort to get out here, get in position, arrive here. Uh, by sunrise, I'll probably sleep over here someplace and then take another couple hours to get in here. Get Pikes Peak and then do the western half of the route. And I want to do a rest bonus in this area out here uh, to uh, maximize those points. So I'm going to pick uh, this PE14 in the Salt Lake City area. I'm not necessarily going to do the rest bonus at that point, but uh, just somewhere around it uh, in Salt Lake City, probably. And I'm going to do that for the full eight hours because I want to maximize them points. It's easier to get points while you're sleeping than it is out driving around sometimes, right? Okay, so let's uh, see how that's going to look. Let's see what our time is at our checkpoint now. All right, shows that we're at. Uh, the final checkpoint going to all the rest of the waypoints along the way from there. And uh, let's go back up to our BRD. Let's say we make 12 uh, p.m. It's a little after lunch, daytime bonus, so we're good there. And we don't have any other uh, timed bonuses along the way. Okay, so it's uh, 6 p.m., so that would be uh, 4 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. So that from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. is how many hours, gang? Do the math real quick. That's uh, four hours. Uh, that may be enough to uh, satisfy you that the route's doable and you just get out there and, and uh, uh, do that without adding any more layover times at each one of the waypoints or any time for gas because those are the other two consumers. Right now we've got the big consumers of, uh, of uh, extra time, the rest bonus and the rest areas. And uh, uh, I would be happy with that. Uh, you're going to make changes along the way anyway based on your, your speeds. So uh, we'll just leave it at that and call that good. Or you can take the time and go in there and add 10 minutes to each one of these guys and get it as close as you can. I personally don't use this method of timing out my routes. I use the Rally Lake Plan tool. Uh, in a companion video, uh, I'll show you that uh, it's uh, a little easier and uh, it's a lot quicker and entirely more accurate than the method I just showed you. You can use any method you want, but uh, if you want to use Garmin Basecamp, that's, this is, technique is certainly a good one. Okay, so uh, now that we've got the route all timed up, we want to get it into our GPS. I've already loaded my GPSs. They're 
sitting here. Here's my 590 and my 665. Each of them have their internal storage and a memory card. Uh, on the 665, you know, you dump stuff into your memory card and then the 665 invites you to import it. Then you can select which ones you want to import. Uh, I haven't really done a whole lot with the, with the 590, but uh, to just put them on the GPS, I put them in the, in the uh, personal storage. Uh, on my GPSs for the Iron Butt Rally, I'm going to have them all cleaned out of extraneous waypoints and uh, anything else. There's nothing critical that I need to have on that GPS that I can't put on uh, with my uh, tablet in uh, 15 minutes if I have to. So for sake of uh, uh, making things clean and easy, I'm going to have only the, the uh, Iron but uh, rally waypoints uh, in both of these GPSs. I can store them in the user data area and then import them if I need to real quickly. Uh, but for the internal storage, I'm going to have them all cleaned out. So to get a uh, route into the GPS, you can several different ways you can do that. Of course, you can use the standard buttons up here to import it in, or you can send it to it or you can use file and then export and then it, you have to define which uh, folder you're going to put it in. And uh, the easiest way to do that, of course, is to uh, just highlight the list, the route that you want to import, and just click on that. And if I say the Zumo, and you'll see it recalculate. Don't know why it does this recalculating stuff. <laughs> In case you made any changes along the way but it will just put it right into there and we'll sh see that in a moment uh, you saw earlier that uh, I only had some local waypoints in there and while we're waiting on that I'll talk a little bit about the uh, the file uh, techniques for getting things in and out of the GPS on uh, the memory cards in your GPS, there's a, uh, a directory if you go into uh, Windows uh, uh, File Manager and uh, say here's the Zumo, go to the memory card, and it has several folders in it. The one that uh, you're going to put your user data into is uh, always going to be called the GPX folder. Same thing true with the... With the uh, 665. It has uh, the Garmin internal stuff and then it has the memory card. That's here too. There's the GPS. Uh, if you have information in the uh, user data folders uh, on your GPS, uh, you, in Basecamp, you can clean them out, but you can't clean them out in the internal part. I haven't been able to clean that out. So when you highlight these guys, let's say I wanted to clean these guys out. I've just highlighted the Zumo uh, internal storage area. And uh, I'm going to see if I can get rid of them. See, there's nothing you can do with that. You can't, uh, the only thing you can do is send it someplace or sort it or copy it, but you can't delete it. So uh, let's look at our, at our uh, 590 where I just sent our data and I can quickly confirm that I have all of them there. Now if I had all of my uh, uh, extraneous uh, things cleaned out, I could compare the lists. The 82 waypoints here against uh, the 82 waypoints down here. And uh, you know, if you wanted to get get these out of there. Maybe you could try to delete them. I don't think you can delete that. Nope, can't delete them. So uh, it's important to take those things out before you do it. Well, that's an example of uh, timing out the route using Garmin Basecamp's uh, uh, in route uh, uh, departure and arrival and layover times, confirming that you get to the checkpoint on time. And uh, like I said, uh, uh, I have a companion video with this to show you the, how the rally leg plan tool works. And uh, like any other plan, as soon as you hit the road, uh, it's only something that you use to verify that uh, your assumptions were 
reasonable and that it, they're achievable. So I hope this was an informative series for you. And uh, if you have any comments, just uh, put them on the uh, forum posting and, and uh, uh, we can deal with them. All right. Thank you very much.